Hi, it's me Leo back again with another video. In this video, we're gonna be revisiting the Samsung Galaxy S10e from 2019. I'm gonna try and help you decide whether or not it's worth picking one of these up in 2024. And as always, if you do enjoy what you see, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We've just hit 1,300 subscribers, which is amazing. We're gonna try and aim for 20 likes in this video. Before we get on with it, let's have a little sip of coffee. Let's get on with it. So as always, we're gonna have a look at the hardware, the software, the camera, and give my opinion on this phone. And there'll be timestamps below if there's a specific part of this video you're interested in. So let's start off by having a look at the hardware and specifications of this Samsung Galaxy S10e. So this Samsung Galaxy S10e was released almost five years ago in early 2019 alongside the Samsung Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus. So that makes this phone almost five years old. It's almost half a decade old, which is crazy. And this was released at a time when the iPhone XS was the most up-to-date iPhone, but this is more comparable to the iPhone XR. So the Samsung Galaxy S10e was a very interesting Samsung phone because Apple a few months earlier had released the iPhone XR, which was essentially a stripped down, cheaper version of the iPhone XS. And Samsung maybe decided to copy that by releasing the Samsung Galaxy S10e, um, which is essentially a stripped down and cheaper version of the Samsung Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus. So five years ago, when this phone was first released, it released for £670, which sounds like quite a lot, but it was actually significantly cheaper than the S10 and the S10 Plus, which released for £800 and £900. But we're now approaching 2024, and this phone can be had secondhand for around £120, which is a, a massive steal. So hopefully the rest of this video is going to help you decide whether or not you want to pick up one of these Samsung Galaxy S10e's in 2024. So now we're gonna move on and have a look at the specs of this Samsung Galaxy S10e. So surprisingly, the specs of this S10e are very similar to the full-size S10 and S10 Plus. Obviously, there are some features that have been stripped down on this phone to bring the price down, but in many ways, this shares more features with the flagship than the iPhone XR which is quite interesting. So the screen on this phone is the thing that surprised me the most. It's actually smaller than the full-size S10 at 5.8 inches, which is actually quite small and compact. The S10 has a 6.1 inch screen, so this is a bit smaller. It is an edge-to-edge -edge display, but it does have slightly larger bezels than the full-size S10. And the resolution of this screen is just over 1080p. The screen is reasonably bright with good colors as it is an AMOLED display. And the pixel density of this phone is decent. It's over 400 PPI. So in terms of display, this is actually a way better display than than what you've got on the iPhone XR, which is one of the selling points of this phone. This phone has a hole punch in the corner for the front-facing camera. So the one feature that reminds you that this is almost a five-year-old phone is the refresh rate. This only has a 60 hertz panel, so there's no high refresh rate on this phone, um, but that doesn't matter. It's still a very usable screen. So I just wanna do a quick comparison of the size of this phone. So as you can see, we're gonna compare this phone to a Google Pixel 7 Pro, which is a quite a large phone this has. So I believe this has a 6.7 inch display and this only has a 5.8 inch display. So as you can see, the Samsung is quite a bit smaller, but in many ways, this makes this a much more portable phone. So in terms of performance, this phone was offered with six gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM, which is still fairly decent even five years later. And this phone surprisingly was actually released with the exact same processor as its big brother, the S10 and the S10 Plus. This came with the eight nanometer Exynos 9820, which is an eight core CPU. So storage wise, this phone was offered with anywhere from 128 gigabytes of internal storage to 512, which is really, really good. So that meant that even the lowest storage offering of this phone was still decent amount of storage, 128 gigabytes. And even better, unlike modern smartphones, you could actually expand the internal storage with a micro SD card, which was really nice to see. And there's even more similarities with this phone and the full size S10. So the camera system on this phone is very similar to the S10. It comes with a standard focal length 12 megapixel camera and a 16 megapixel wide angle shooter. And these two cameras are exactly the same as the S10, which is really nice to see. So this phone can still take some very decent photos even by today's standards. The only difference between the camera system on this phone and the full size S10 was that the full size S10 had a telephoto lens, which this doesn't. This phone also has the same 10 megapixel front face camera as the full size S10 and the front facing photos still look decent so here's some examples that I've taken and here are also some examples of photos taken the rear facing cameras one thing that is different between this phone and the full size S10 is the battery so this has a 3100 mAh battery whereas the full size S10 had a slightly larger battery but saying that the screen on this phone is smaller so this will be using less power than the full size S10 and battery life on this phone was okay but it is a shame that the battery on this phone isn't easily removable it is worth noting this phone doesn't actually support fast charging it only supports up to 15 watts of 
charging, but that should be okay because the battery on this phone isn't actually that big, so it shouldn't take too long to top up. Let's have a look around the outside of this phone. So on the top of the phone, you have this dual SIM tray. So it has space for a micro SD card and a SIM card, which is very nice to see. The edges of this phone feel very nice in your hand. I believe this is actually made out of steel. It does feel very durable and very hard wearing. So on the side of the phone, you actually have one of the most unique features of this phone, which is a power button that also has a fingerprint reader built into it, which is a very cool feature. Whereas phones nowadays tend to have the fingerprint reader built into the screen. This has it on the side of the phone, on the power button. Moving on to the bottom of the phone, it has a single speaker grill, it has a USB-C charger, and it also comes with a headphone jack, which is a very nice feature to have on a phone. So moving over to the other side of the phone, you have a volume rocker and a Bixby button. So I believe Samsung don't even support Bixby anymore, which is quite interesting. In terms of software support, so this phone was released with Android 9 and it's upgradable up to Android 12. So unfortunately you won't be able to have the latest version of Android on this phone. And like all Samsung phones from a few years ago, it comes with the TouchWiz skin, which a lot of people aren't a fan of. Um, and that means there'll be kind of a Samsung equivalent app for everything. So there's like a Samsung app store and there's Samsung Pay which a lot of places don't even support which is a bit annoying. It's definitely not as nice as the stock Android experience from a Google Pixel. So I just want to say the design and build quality of this phone is probably one of my favourite parts of this phone. So this exact version of the phone comes with a white back but it's a very very nice finish as you can see. So here we have the white version of the phone but the back's actually very interesting because when you reflect it in light it kind of has a marbly kind of orange finish to it which is very nice. So the big question is if you're considering picking up this phone in 2024 should you? So I've been using this phone for the best part of a day and the kind of user experience has been fairly manageable. So this phone isn't especially slow, it opens apps normally. Obviously the main things you're going to be noticing compared to a newer, more expensive smartphone are, are the slower 60Hz refresh rate which going from a 120Hz phone to this 60 phone is very noticeable. Things seem a little bit more stuttery. And obviously in 2024, this isn't the most powerful phone. So some apps do feel a bit slower and a bit sluggish compared to using them on a modern smartphone. But the form factor and the display make up for that because it is a very, very nice display. So using this phone to watch movies and YouTube videos, the display is really, really good. But one thing to be aware of, because this phone is a couple of years old is battery degradation. So because this doesn't have a kind of removable battery, you want to make sure that if you pick up this phone used that the battery's in good health because, um, because the battery wasn't amazing in the first place. So if you buy one with kind of a degraded battery, the battery life is going to be pretty rubbish. An example of that is this phone, which is a couple of years old and it has been used quite heavily. And this is still rocking the original battery and then you probably only get between an hour and a half to two hours of screen on time, which isn't great. The question is, do I recommend picking one of these up used for about 120 pounds? And the answer probably is no. One, because if you pick up a used version of this phone the battery is probably going to be quite degraded and just unusable so you're going to have to replace the battery which will cost even more. The other reason is because of software support so this phone isn't supported with the latest security and Android updates so so that'll probably mean that newer version of apps won't be supported by this phone. So my recommendation is of buying one of these for cheap I'd probably get a newer maybe even used um, mid-range Samsung phone like an A34 and A54. The overall user experience will probably be better on that phone than this phone. So anyways, if you've got any questions about this Samsung Galaxy S10e, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get around to answering them. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're on the road to 2000 subscribers. And if you did enjoy, hit that like button and I'll see everyone in my next video.